Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm here to give you guys my review of Call of Duty World War II. Now, of course, my main focus is the multiplayer, but I did play a little bit of the zombies in the campaign. But let's start off with the campaign and the zombies real quick. The campaign, I started out, and one thing I like about these kind of games, this is real. This really happened. So you actually learn and stuff, you know what I mean? You, you It's like you immerse with that experience because this really happened. You guys know what I mean. If you play a game like Infinite Warfare or Black Ops 3, that didn't happen. So it's kind of futuristic, it's fake, it didn't happen yet. Take the Bangalore and get to the seawall! It kind of gets you on your toes because I was playing this game on Veteran and the Blown Ring down to the Harder. And man, you die so quick in those two um, modes. So um, I like the campaign all in all. Um, so far, so good. I only got past the second mission. And really, to be honest, I really don't care too much about the campaign in Call of Duties no more. Because, well, the last Call of Duty campaign that I cared about was MW3. MW3, one of the best. The Modern Warfare series in general had the best um, campaign, man, throughout the whole entire series, hands down. But overall, I love the campaign. It's fun, it's intensive, and it's somewhat different. Because, well, now you have a health bar now on the bottom that you have to keep an eye of. There's a lot of times when I'm just running into gunfights, okay, I'm going to regen my health. That is not the case. There's many times I die because I wasn't paying attention to my health bar. So now in the campaign, you have to ask your squad mates for health packs or you can look for first aid kits around the map or around the area. You know, it's different and I like that playstyle a lot. So the campaign is cool. It's hardcore. It's intensive. It really gets you on your toes for real. And speaking of toes, let's talk about the zombie mode. That's a mode where you're really on your toes, especially if you're playing the second map. That second map where you're stuck inside a house, you just got to survive. You do have an item box. That's like a little Easter egg that you have to do. It's easy, but you have a bunch of zombies and a little bit amount of space. So speaking of intensive, that's just insane. Now, the first map, I didn't really play too much. Um, you know, I didn't really get my hands on the fancy smancy weapons or the, you know, what I mean the power-ups that everybody's doing or these zombies YouTubers are doing. I just like that second map so much because it reminds me of like a old school zombies like Treyarch, the first map where you just have to survive. You have your item box and that's it. You just got to survive. It just reminds me of that. And you have some kind of power-up where you can shock your hand and get some kind of ability. Um, but hey, it's still a basic map and I love that. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes simple is good. That's why my name is Simply Pops. So the zombies and the campaign are pretty solid. I gotta say, I have a lot of fun with those two modes. What about the multiplayer? The reason why you're even probably watching this review video is because of the multiplayer. And I gotta say, I spent hours playing the multiplayer of World War II. Somebody wanted me to review this game. I didn't really want to, to be honest with you guys, but I'm doing it for this person right here, man. <laughs> First up, I want to talk about the multiplayer maps. Nine maps? Nine maps, Sledgehammer? I almost called them Treyarch. Come on, Sledgehammer. You had three years to make this game, and you gave us nine maps. That's pretty ridiculous. And not only that, these maps are mediocre to bad maps that I would never play again. And you know what? It's okay to have nine maps. Even though this is the lowest map count in any Call of Duty game before the season pass, at least make them good. Um, but hey, I guess that's what the season pass is for. Activision is here to make money, and that's why they gave us the bad maps now, and then they have us purchase the DLC. I hate that. Now, in terms of the guns, the guns, I actually like the guns in this game, to be honest with you guys. The Type 100 is my favorite weapon in this game. The PPSH is also my favorite weapon in this game. The FG, the bar. I said bar so far, I said bar. But you guys get the idea. I love the weapons in this game so much, from the assault rifles to the horrible snipers. The snipers in this game, they work, but it just overpowered to the max. Oh my god. It's quick scoping is back. So if you if you into quick scoping, this is the game you should get, for real. And you know, no hate to the snipers, do what you do, but damn, it can get a little annoying after a while if the whole team have snipers, and oh, it's annoying, man. I'm feeling salty, but it is what it is. But going back to Black Ops 3, you didn't, I didn't really have that problem like that. I didn't really run into no quick scopers or anything like that. And we can all agree that Black Ops 3 was the best Call of Duty game for the PS4 and Xbox One. We can all agree with that. So far, 
Treyarch is killing the game, killing the Call of Duty franchise right now. In a good way, though. I'm saying, like, they're doing a good job, I'm trying to say. Now, let's talk about the multiplayer game modes real quick. We have the basic game modes such as TDM and Kill Confirm, and you have the War Mode. Now, the War Mode is, like, a completely different game mode. It's, like, it's multiplayer, but it's, like, something totally different. You have different maps. You have different objectives. I kind of feel like I'm playing, like, a mini Battlefield, like a... I guess you could say bootleg battlefield, I guess you could say. Um, but no hate to Call of Duty. Um, but I love the war mode so much. There's times where I have a lot of fun and getting a lot of kills and following the objective. I must say, this mode is perfect if you have a squad or if you have your friends together in the party chat. You could just hop on war, get a couple of kills, and just relax. You know what I mean? It's one of those smooth game modes. Time to time, you have your bonus playlist, such as um, recently just passed. You have the winter map. Um, you have gun game. I don't know why Sledgehammer removed gun game. I feel like they should bring that back. Now, how's the connection? I gotta say the connection sometimes is a little wonky. There's a lot of times where you have a lot of lag going on, and there's a lot of time where the hit detection is a little crappy. But when you have a solid internet connection, the hit detection is pretty moderate. You know what I mean? It's in between. It's not the best. It's not like Call of Duty Ghost where you shoot somebody and they die. That's one thing with any Infinity Ward game. They have great connection. For some reason, with any Infinity Ward game, the connection to their games is spot on. Like, look at MW2. Look at COD4. MW3 even. Even though MW3 was the worst, it was still up there. It was still better than Treyarch sometimes. Um, but yeah, Infinity Ward have spot on hit detection. But Sledgehammer... The last BS that they put out, Advanced Warfare, shitty hit detection. I was trying my best not to curse, but it, it was shitty hit detection from time to time. But this one, they got better, but it's moderate. It's not. It's just not completely there yet. Now, I want to talk about the connection, the multiplayer connection in Call of Duty World War II. This is the most important part of any Call of Duty game. This could either make or break a Call of Duty game, for real, for me. Um, I feel like the connection sometimes is a little spotty, sometimes it works, sometimes you shoot somebody, they die. But then there's a lot of times when I shoot first, and I die. So, you know, it's a lot of lag from time to time in this game, but for the most part, ah, sometimes it's equal, it's in between. Overall, ladies and gentlemen, let me wrap up this video, I don't want to make this video too long. Call of Duty World War II is a solid game, it's a solid Call of Duty. If you love Call of Duty, I wouldn't see why not pick this game up, but... I wouldn't really recommend it for $60. If you could pick up this game for $30 or less, then I'll say go ahead and buy it. It's a great game. Uh, matter of fact, I picked up this game for $24 because it was a sale going on. Picked up right there on Amazon, which by the way, I throw a link in the description. Maybe Amazon have a little sale going on for Call of Duty World War II. And that's another thing too. Try to get the physical copy because if you don't like it, you can send it back. You could trade it in. And you can get some money for it versus if you buy it digitally on the PlayStation Store, you're just stuck with that and you're paying more money. So I would avoid the digital version. Try to go with the physical so you have a choice if you want to return it, if you don't like it. But all in all, folks, I'm giving Call of Duty World War II a 7.5 or maybe a 7 out of 10. Now, I might even give it a 7.5 just because, well, I love Call of Duty. This is just not the one, but if you love Call of Duty, go ahead and buy it for $30 or less. That concludes my review. See you guys on my next video. Bye. Peace.